How's it going YouTube? I'm going to be covering some tips on what you should be doing in order to optimize your runs through the first palace on a 100% clean merciless playthrough, which will also prepare you for Kamoshida's boss battle as well as all the social events that will follow after. If you guys aren't familiar with what merciless is, check out my previous video on what to expect. I don't think there's anything else that needs to be said, so let's begin. There are going to be 5 total trips for the first palace. The first two are tutorials. The third time is a restricted run, but you get to grind. The fourth time is the real run where you will have to find the treasure before you leave. And the fifth time is the Kamoshida boss fight. During each run, we'll want to maximize the amount of experience and yen we gain to prepare for future events and runs, as well as obtain all the needed personas for the social links afterwards. The first visit to the palace on April 11th will only contain two forced battles. The second visit on April 12th will allow you to roam a little bit. You will be able to respawn the two guards in the prison by save loading in the safe room, as long as you don't progress to the last tutorial. Farming these two shadows is optional, as the experience and yen you gain will be very minuscule since you can't negotiate yet. I like to farm them since I get a free recovery at the end of the dungeon for the boss fight anyway, so there's nothing really lost. Because of this, do not use any items during this run. April 15th will be the next visit and will allow you more freedom to grind. When you visit the safe room, you can perform a save load here to have the shadows respawn after killing them all. At the end of this run, you should be level 5 and have gained around 15,000 yen. You should have also gained two new personas, which are Jack-O-Lantern and Pixie. You won't be able to recruit Bicorn or Mandrake yet since criticals will kill it. Also do not recruit Incubus since we will be forced to fuse him later. If you do fight Incubus, you should be able to win the fight with only one bullet if it's only two of them. You can take damage from them as long as the MC does not die. For Incubus fights, I like to negotiate for an item since they can give you odd morsels, which increase your attack power while also healing you for 50 health. This will be very useful later. Incubus also drops 10 claps, which is needed to make lockpicks, so you want to kill a few of them. April 20th is your first unrestricted full run of the dungeon. The goal for this run is to reach level 8 and gain another 10,000 yen. We will want to obtain the Persona's Bicorn for Tarunda, which will make the Heavenly Punisher and Kamoshida boss fight a whole lot easier. Mandrake for Tei's social link, Agathon for Ruji's social link, and either Kelpie or Silky in order to get Beareth later for Sojiro's social link. The first time you begin, you'll want to avoid as many battles as possible until you reach the central tower. The only exception is if you run to Agathons. These guys need to be recruited or negotiated with for a soul drop, which recovers 10 SP. This is a very useful item given how rare SP items are in the beginning of the game. Eventually you'll run into a shadow guarding a chest, and you'll learn about shadows begging for their life. This unlocks the method for recruiting Bicorn and Mandrake. Once you finish this tutorial, go back to the beginning of the palace and find those shadows to recruit. If you weaken them to about 5-10%, to they'll try to talk to you and give you the chance to recruit them. Make sure you save before you do this as you can fail and lose a lot of health in the process. Once you have those, you're ready to progress to Central Tower. Once you reach Central Tower, there will be a grind spot for you. There will be a glowing red shadow blocking one of the paths to the upper areas before the swinging blades. This is a battle against a level 16 Heavenly Punisher and two Pixies. Kill the two Pixies and knock down the Heavenly Punisher for 22 experience. Once you hit level 6, you'll have to think about how you want to recruit Barith. You can either recruit Silky for Bufu and then recruit Barith when you come back when you steal Kamashido's treasure, or you can recruit Kelpie, which will be fused with Bicorn to create Barith. Both require a similar amount of resources, so do whatever you think works best for you. The last time you will enter the palace is on April 22nd. Upon entering, you should be level 8, so we'll use the same grind spot as last time to gain the last level. The dungeon will be more difficult in that security will not drop below 70%, this causes some extra shadows to potentially spawn after each battle, causing you to lose your ambush. Ruji's SP is not important for Kamashita's battle, so use it all on the Heavenly Punisher. Keep in mind that another shadow will spawn once you leave the victory screen, so be prepared to run back and repeat. Once you hit level 9, you will recruit Barith using Silky or fuse him using Bicorn and Kelpie. If you perform the fusion, make sure to carry over to Runda. 
You can do whatever grinding you want after Ruji runs out of SP, but just remember that it's more difficult. Before the boss fight, you'll want to keep the party's health as close to full as possible. The main character should have at least 59 SP, while Morgana and Anne can float around at least maybe 50%. So those are the tips to make your Merciless 100% difficulty run a little less painful in the beginning, as well as what's needed to follow the schedule. If you have any other tips or more efficient strategies, feel free to share. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.